The Pemaquid Peninsula is all rocks. We have lots of rock types around here. Some big, some small, some scattered, and some stacked. Most of the loose rocks were brought here by glaciers over 10,000 years ago. But what about the rocks under our feet? When visitors come to see our great parks, we often hear our guests ask about them. It's probably our most frequently asked question, how did the rocks get to look like that? Luckily for all of us, the Fisherman's Museum is home to these two documents, both great resources about the geology of our peninsula. The first source is this book by David M. Pope, titled Geology of the Pemaquid Region, Midcoast, Maine. This book is available in the Seagull Shop next door to the park for anybody who's interested in learning more. The second source is this packet from the Maine Geological Survey, Scenic Ledges at Pemaquid Point Lighthouse. The Maine Geological Survey has a wealth of information online for anybody who is interested to find it. The rocks beneath our lighthouse are gorgeous and they have quite a story. These rocks are all part of a rock group called the Bucksport Formation, which extends all the way up the eastern coast. There are quite clearly these light-colored rocks, such as the rock the lighthouse is built on. There are also these darker-colored rocks, which range in shades from greenish-gray to black. What are these rocks, and how did they get here? The darker-colored rocks were originally ocean sediments hundreds of millions of years ago. They were laid flat over thousands of years by the sea. These layers were buried deeper and deeper, eventually becoming transformed by heat and pressure into the metamorphic rocks we see exposed here. That same heat and pressure is responsible for these layers being turned nearly vertical in some places, such as at the Laverna Preserve. The minerals in this rock are mainly quartz, feldspar, and black mica. The ratio of black mica to other minerals in a layer decides how dark the rock is. The white rock that you see is all igneous rock. During the metamorphic process that these rocks endured, cracks would form inside the rocks. Some of the rock material was melted and then injected into these cracks in the rock. This molten rock was mostly quartz and feldspar. The molten rock cooled and being mostly light colored minerals they took on this grayish white shade. Upon exposure to the surface the elements have weathered the rocks. The waves have smoothed them out and the wind and rain have created pits and holes. Storms have knocked massive chunks loose. They haven't eroded all at the same rate however. The metamorphic rock being made from layers naturally will erode much more easily than the igneous rock. The result is that the darker colored rocks are almost always more beaten than the lighter colored ones. Eventually waves will form cracks in the large white rock and it takes just one good storm to tear a big piece away like this one here. These rocks are very old. They come from a period of time called the Devonian period, about 360 million to 420 million years ago. The Earth was an unrecognizable place in the Devonian. Fish swimming in the ocean had just begun to form a sort of teeth. There were forests of giant ferns on the land. Trilobites were skittering all around on the ocean floor. There were no land animals to speak of and no people around to appreciate any of it. These rocks were all part of a mini continent called Avalonia. It eventually found itself smashing into a larger continent, Laurentia. After the two continents were fused together, the African tectonic plate eventually collided as well. It created a single massive continent that we all know about, known as Pangaea. Pangaea split apart after some time, leaving behind the Atlantic Ocean and the coast of Maine. Beyond the collision of continents long ago, the glaciers that came down across Pemaquid Point for hundreds of thousands of years have further distorted the rocks. Two miles of ice sat on top of the spot where I'm sitting right now. 15,000 years ago, the glacier retreated. So these are the main culprits for what made the rocks look the way they do. They were formed underground, pushed here during the formation of Pangaea, and all sorts of damage was caused to them by the massive glaciers that swept over them in the past. During the formation of the rocks under Earth's surface, they were under intense pressure. As the rock was undergoing the metamorphic process, the thin layers were trapped and forced into all sorts of new, painful shapes. These rocks that I'm standing by here are probably the best example of rock folding you'll see anywhere. The layers of rock were pressed around each other, folded and wrinkled by the pressure and heat. Another interesting process that takes place is something called tigmatic folding. Small, thin veins of material will get sandwiched between two darker, thicker veins of material. 
As they compress, the smaller vein is often wrinkled and distorted. The result are these artistic white squiggles all through the rock. The gradual slope of the rocks here at Pemaquid Point have often led people to ask whether or not the slope continues into the sea and what's beyond the waves. As far as I know, the rocks continue to slope down but become more dramatic the farther out you go, eventually reaching 15 feet deep just a stone's throw from the low tide margin. This isn't a place you'd ever want to go swimming. The shape of the rocks underwater causes quite a serious current out there, especially on rough days. Combine that with the cold bite of the water and the scrapes of the barnacles, I don't think you'd be going home to dinner that night. Some experienced divers are able to go under the water here. Usually we have students from universities coming to study marine life. Our sea contains a kelp forest with lots of rocky crevices, an ideal habitat for lobsters and other hardy critters. There are an uncountable amount of boulders out on our shores, and especially on our little rock beach just beside the lighthouse. It's hard to say where they all came from, but you can take a good guess by looking at their composition. The giant white boulders quite obviously have come from the large white rock layer just nearby, probably knocked loose by wave action. Many of the cobbled stones down in the rock beach have been knocked loose of the bedrock by waves as well. They've all been polished smooth by the hundreds and maybe thousands of years of pounding water. A lot of these boulders were deposited by the glacier as well. All the boulders you see on land were left by ice, but on the shore, it's harder to tell just by looking. What is now shallow sea was once land 10,000 years ago, and the ice deposited stones there as well. Those deposited stones all got picked up by the waves and tossed into the mix. It's not known for sure who was the first person to set foot in Pemaquid. Our record of human habitation here has been disrupted by the rising sea. Some of the oldest human leftovers we know about in our town only go back to about 5,000 years. People have certainly been here longer than that. Native Americans first followed herds of animals into what was post-glacial Maine almost 12,000 years ago, staying near the coast the entire time to reap its resources as well. Undoubtedly, people unwittingly first passed by Pemaquid around this time. It probably wasn't the same as today, and they might have only seen it as a rocky upland away from the coast. The sea level was much lower 10,000 years ago, which means the coast was at a distance farther south from here. There are no fossils to be found in the bedrock of Pemaquid. These rocks form deep underground without anything to really fossilize in them. Some of the rock contains the remains of shell material that's been crystallized into the rock, but it didn't fossilize. The only opportunity a fossil hunter might find in Pemaquid is in the glacial boulders and stones left on the surface, which had been brought down from the north. Maine does have a wealth of marine fossils elsewhere, ranging from 500 to 360 million years old. The beach sand is primarily ground up quartz and mica, the quartz giving it the pearly white color and the mica makes it shimmer in the sun. The rocks at the beach are actually part of an entirely different rock group called the Cross River Formation. These rocks are usually reddish brown in color with black sparkly bits all throughout. If you go to the margins of the beach on a calm tide, you can see pools of mica accumulating near the large rocks as the waves scrape it off. We'll have more about the beach in our next video because the story of the beach is just as interesting. That will do it for today's program. We've looked at enough rocks to qualify as geologists at this point, I'm sure. I've really enjoyed telling you the story about these rocks. Geology is a great thing to get into, and I have had a blast with it. I can't thank you enough for coming with me today. Until next time, bye for now.